Hey, what's up creators, Bert is here today. We're going to be going over an introduction to Control Rig inside of Unreal Engine 5. Today's video is going to be all about showing you exactly how you can set up a Control Rig. And then we're also going to be creating a second video, which is going to be showing you how we can actually animate our characters with it. So for those of you that don't know what Control Rig is, Control Rig is a new piece of tech that comes with Unreal Engine 5 that essentially allows us to take a rigged character and add controls to them with full body IK if we want, and very easily create a control and a system that is going to allow us to animate our character. And we can do all kinds of cool stuff with this, um, whether that be animating the character with sequence or adding controls with blueprints to drive all of that. Really fun, really exciting. Let me show you what a control rig is going to look like and what you're going to be creating as part of this session. If you take a look at my screen here, you can see I've got a very simple character. And with this, I've got some controls that I've set up. And we can see these. These are the little rings that I've got around um, the hands, the feet, and the head of this character. Now, what I can do with these is I can select each of these controls individually, and I can move these to control my character. And you can see as I move it, the other body parts are going to be moving with it, but I can essentially take these. And what I'm going to be able to do is keyframe the positions of all of these in sequencer to create our own character animations. And this is really, really powerful. But more than anything, if you just want to edit animations, you can set up some very simple controls and do all of this inside of Unreal Engine. What you can also see on the screen right now is a couple of animations that were made with Control Rig to give you an idea of exactly what it is that you're going to be able to create. If you'd like to take your game development skills to the next level, be sure to check out my first person shooter game course and my survival game course where you learn to build a game in just one week. So the first thing that you're going to need to have is a character. Now you can use the Unreal Engine mannequin if you want that comes as part of the um, default template or you can use your own. I downloaded this character from Mixamo. Great website for getting free characters, it's amazing. But once we've got a character, and again, you can get this from any source, what we're going to do is just go up to File and Edit and just make sure that we, sorry, we go up to Edit and then Plugins. We're going to make sure that we enable the Control Rig plugin. You can do this by just searching for it at the top and then just enabling Control Rig and turning that on. You'll most likely need to restart the editor. Once you've done that though, we can actually now take a rigged character that we have already and apply a control rig. Really straightforward, really easy. What we're going to do is find our skeletal mesh, which we know is a rigged character. And then on that, we're going to right click on this and we're going to go to create and we're going to create a control rig. And this is going to create us a new control rig file. And with this, if I wanted to, I can drag and drop this into the scene to see exactly what it's going to look like. It's just our character that was rigged just in our scene. Now, because we haven't set up any controls, there's none of these little red circles or anything like that. And that's where we need to create these so that we can actually control this character. So to do this really straightforward, let's go ahead and open up our newly created control rig file. Now, just to break down the interface a little bit, first things first, we have our rig hierarchy in the bottom left hand corner here which is going to allow us to see all of the different bones for our control rig. And this is really important because these bones are the things that we're actually going to be moving. Our legs, our feet, our head, and all of that good stuff. And we're essentially just going to be adding controls to these to move them. So let's go ahead and set that up. So let's start off with the head. And we can see a preview here up in the top left hand corner of what our character looks like. And I can also see the bone that I've selected. Now with this, what I'm going to do is add a control to this so we can actually manipulate it. To do that, right click on the bone. For me, that's the head. And then I'm going to go to new and then control. What this has done is now it has now created a control with our head. And if we go ahead and click on this in the rig hierarchy, we can see we've got this red icon here, the head control. But with this, we can't really see anything. Um, but for the most part, you can see it's not doing anything. And that's because we need to set up a few things. So first things first, 
let's go ahead and take the head control and define the shape so we actually have something we can work with. I'm just going to set this to circle thick so it's nice and easy to see. I'm also going to scale up this rig control here so I can see it nice and easily. There is one, it's just inside the head here, it's very small. So what I'm going to do is just set this to 5 on the scale. And you can see we now have that head control. What I did there was I just pressed the little lock icon here to make it so all of these are going to change uniformly, the X, the Y, the Z that is. And now they're all just 5. So I have this big, thick circle control. Now, what we can also see is with this control, we have this, but it's facing the wrong direction. We want it to wrap around the head like a halo, just so we can easily rotate and manipulate this. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just take my different axes here, in my case the X, and I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees on the X. You can see here, you can change this to all kinds of values if you want to, um, but for me, with each of these controls, I want to make them as easy as I possibly can. So with that done, we now have our rig control here for our head. It's very visible and we can start to work with this. Okay, so now that we actually have the control in place and it's set up to wrap around the head correctly, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually bind this to the bone. So when we move that control, the bone is actually going to move with it because that's essentially what we need to do. We just need to attach the bone to the control and then we're good to animate. The way that we're going to do this inside of Unreal Engine is with our forward solve here, what we're going to do is essentially get a reference to this head control and I can do that by dragging and dropping into my scene and get a reference to the control. What I'm then going to do is from the transform, I am going to set the transform and with this, I can take a specific bone, so I can set this to the head. I can essentially make the transform of my head bone match the transform of my control. Really straightforward stuff. If I go ahead and compile this now, you can see if I click on this control and I move it, you can see that my head is going to move with it. So just to recap real quick on what I did there is I have my control and I've been always been able to rotate and move that control. What I did there was essentially I set the transform, so the movement of that bone, to be exactly the same as the control. So they move as one together. And now I'm in a position where I can just take that control and I can start moving it to create animations. But what we want to do now is we actually want to take this control a little bit further so that we can define exactly what we can do with this control. Now, what I mean by that is we don't want to be able to have that control do a complete 180. We only want it to be able to move a little bit to the left and the right. We only want it to move up and down so much with the head. And we can do that by using minimum and maximum values. Let's go ahead and set it up. So back inside of my control rig, what I'm going to do is with my head control, if I just go ahead and click on this, what I have inside of here is initial, current, offset, and minimum. And we also have maximum over here, um, but you might not be able to see that unless you stretch out this window a little bit. The ones that we're really interested in right now is simply just the minimum and the maximum. You also might want to set the initial too. So what we're going to do is we're essentially going to be taking minimum and maximum values to define how far the head can rotate. To do this, what we're going to do is essentially take this minimum value and we can say, hey, on the y-axis, which is this one right now, what I want this to be is I want to make sure this goes no more than 30 degrees to the left. And we can see what that looks like because now if I try and move it minus 30, I can't go past that. That value might not be quite correct. I might even want to set this to 50 degrees so I can no longer rotate it any more than 50 degrees. So all I'm doing here is just setting minimum and maximum values for all of my controls. For the maximum, same thing on the Y, I'm going to set this to 50. So now you see here, as I turn it, it can no longer ever look any more than what I'm telling it to, which is perfect. 
Now, we're going to be doing the same thing with the up and down. So if I rotate it up, I probably only want it to go up to about 30 degrees up, but then I'd say about 20 degrees down. So let's define that. So the minimum for my up, which we know is our x here, I'm going to set this, let's take a look. I'm going to set this to 30. Not quite, so minus 30 even. And now if I rotate it, you see it only goes up this far, which is perfect. And then what I can also do is back with this, I can then set my maximum to be 20 down. So now you can see I can only move that control within the region that I've set. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and then also a little bit up and down. Okay, so some of you might be wondering why I set all of that up. Now, the reason I did that is because I kind of want to have a safety net. I don't ever want my head to be able to move too far to the left or the right or up or down when I'm animating so that all of my animations look realistic. Now, I would definitely encourage you all to do the same thing for every control that you set up. Set up those minimum and maximums so it all stays within what it should be. Now, especially when we're doing full body IK, where it's moving other bo body parts and joints and stuff um, based on the mo movement of other controls, you just want to make sure it stays within those realistic ranges. Let's jump back into Unreal Engine 5 and set up a few more controls. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the hands uh, for left and right. And then, of course, you're going to be more than welcome to set up the feet as well in your own time. But the process is exactly the same. So back inside of Unreal Engine, let's go ahead and repeat that process and now create some controls for the hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my right hand bone in my rig hierarchy. And again, to create a control for this, right click, new, and then control. And this will create the control for us. We can see this. Go ahead and click on it in the bottom left here. What we're going to do with this now is just like before, we're going to change the shape from this default sphere and we're going to change this to be a circle thick. Again, this could be any shape you like. I'm then going to change my scale and I'm going to set this to five, five and five, or maybe three, three and three is going to be a little bit more fitting. But straight away, you can see our control here is in a bit of a weird, awkward position. So what I'm going to do is just rotate it. Now I'm going to play around with my axes, but I can see here I need to move it on my X. So I'm simply going to take my shape transform and set this to 90. And what this is going to do now is essentially just give us that control there. And with that, it's now correctly positioned. And of course, you can adjust the shape and size until you have a control that you think is going to work. Okay, so now we've got our control. This is looking great. Let's, just like before, attach that control to the bone. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to take that right hand control, we're going to get a reference to that control, and then set transform down at the bottom here for the bone, which is the hand. And again, to do this, you just take your item, you expand that, and set this to right hand. And then we're just going to join this up to our forwards resolve. With that done, we can go ahead and compile. And we can see now if we select this control, we can then take this and we can move it. And you can see the hand is going to go with it. Of course, for body IK is not quite there, so it's not going to look correct. But if we were to rotate it, you can see it's rotating correctly. We will do the full body IK stuff. With this setup, if you wanted to, you could set up the minimum and the maximum values for the hand, making sure it can only bend to around here. And let's go ahead and set that up real quick. It's only going to take a moment. So let's do our minimum. So starting off with our X, we're going to make sure it doesn't ever bend any more than 30 degrees on the X. It's got to be at 30 at a minimum, 
and maximum, it's also going to be 30. We can't move that, so minimum should be minus 30, and maximum should be 30, and now you see we can move it up just like that. So now we have nice hand movements. We can also do the same thing for rotating this on the X. We can set our minimum to something like minus 20 and maximum to 20. So that way we can only rotate it so far. And you can see there, we now have a pretty realistic looking hand control, which is awesome. So now that we have one hand, let's go ahead and very quickly do exactly the same thing for the other hand. We know exactly what those values are, so we can just make that new control and do it super, super quick. So back inside of here, again, we're just gonna take our left hand, right click on that and add a new control. With this control, we know this is gonna be a circle because it's exactly the same as the other one. The scale, we're gonna set this to two and we're also going to change our rotation. So this is 90 degrees. And you can see here now our controls look pretty much identical. I can then bind this left hand control to the bone by taking that transform and just doing set transform. So transform, set transform. And then with this on execute, we're just going to bind this to the left hand bone. If we compile this, we can then rotate this hand. Of course, we're going to want to make sure that we have the exact same values for our minimum and our maximum as this. So let's take a look at our left hand. So on the minimum, it's minus 30 minus 20, and maximum 30, 20 there. So let's do the same thing over here. So enable these, minus 30 for this one, minus 20 on this one. Maximum we know is gonna be 30, and we know is going to be 20. And what we have now is we have our control set up so you can only move it a little bit on each of those, which is perfect. Okay, at this point, we now have the control set up for our head and our arms, and we should have a good understanding of what it looks like actually taking this character and creating controls that we can edit. The last thing that I want to show you as part of this tutorial is I want to show you how you can set up full body IK. Full body IK is essentially the process of taking the body and making all of the bones move depending on the locations of the other bones. So what I mean by that is essentially when we have the positions for our hands there, as we move it, I want the elbow to go with it as well. Okay, so back inside of Unreal Engine now, let's go ahead and show you how we can set up the full body IK. So what I'm gonna do is first and foremost, I'm just going to remove all of this stuff for the transform because we're actually going to be doing this with full body IK instead of the controls, but of course, the controls are gonna be taken into consideration. So all you want in here is your forward solve. Go ahead and compile this. Then what we're gonna do is drag out from this and we're gonna search for full body IK. And what this is going to allow us to do is essentially take a root bone, which in our case, I'm just gonna to set to hips, but this is generally gonna be the spine or something similar. And we can find out exactly what that is by just going to our rig hierarchy and just finding out what the one is at the top. This is our root. Then what we can do is essentially just take our effectors, which are essentially just going to be our controls and tell it to do this whole full body IK thing based on the position of all of these controls. Really straightforward, really simple. Let's go ahead and set these up. One thing I will mention is with each of these controls to work with our full body IK, we need to make sure we right click on these and we unparent these. So do that on each of these. With that done, we can then go ahead and press compile and we can start adding them in. So let's start off with our left hand. I'm going to get a reference to that control. We're gonna to go to our effectors and we're gonna add an effector with the transform here. And we're gonna set the bone to our left hand. 
just make sure that you're typing that in correctly. And then with this, we now have full body IK with that as an effector. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add another one of these. And this time, we're going to do the right hand. And we're going to put right hand control into the transform for that. Then we're going to add in another effector for the head. And you guessed, we are going to attach the control for the head into this. And we're going to hit compile. OK, so now that we have our effectors set up, what we can do is take a look at how this full body IK is going to look like. Now, what we're going to do for the time being is just select one of our controls. And I'm going to start with my head. And I'm just going to make sure I turn off my minimum and my maximum values for now just by disabling them here, because it's going to change from local space to world space. And you're going to be able to test our full body IK. So if I move my head forward, and I can do this just by simply selecting my head control, pressing W to go to my move, and I can move this forward, and you can see the rest of the body is now going to go with it, which is perfect. I can do the same thing for my hands. So I can go to my rotate, which is E, and I can rotate my hands so they're correct. Again, you're going to want to turn off your minimum and your maximum there, and we'll need to remake those. And you can see we can then rotate that, and then we can also move it. So we can start animating our character. And it's really, really interesting stuff. And we could do the same thing for the other hand as well. We can turn those minimum and maximum values off. And then we can rotate it and move it so it all fits. OK, so there we have it. We now have our character, and we have got controls for the arms and the head. And at this point, you're all going to know how you can create controls for things like the hips, the elbow joints, the feet, and you can turn this into a complete character which can be animated using this full body IK. What we will be doing in the next video is showing you how we can actually take this and then keyframe all of the movements so you can create animations. That's it for this video though, I hope you have enjoyed it as always. Stay awesome, keep curating, Virtus signing out.